Hello again, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So this week, I want to go through all the mixed messaging we get on the Canadian housing market. We hear, you know, houses or prices are going up, prices are going down, supply, demand, everything else, right? So I kind of wanted to go through the latest news and opinions to kind of get a all round perspective, because it's day by day, right? One day you hear one thing, and the next day you hear another. And of course, you have interest rates and uh, inflation rates and all the rest of this stuff. So I kind of just want to go through a few things and kind of get a consensus to where we are. So let me start off with the latest news uh, in the last week or so. So from the banks, so the big banks here, bank CEOs expect to put more money aside for bad loans amid higher rates. So of course, the banks or some of the banks, I think it was Scotia Bank and the Royal Bank, they're increasing their loan loss provisions so that when people default on their loans, they have more money to cover those. So they're putting more of that money away. And uh, it's obviously a sign of the times. Next, we had an article that just came out yesterday, and it was from uh, Post or the Financial Post here. And of course, they're interviewing Roy LePage again. Why Canada's housing market could rebound sooner than many expect. Buyers will come back before the Bank of Canada cuts rates, says Roy LePage. So, of course, this is not unexpected that a real estate company is saying that, you know, prices are going to accelerate and, and sales are going to increase. The recovery will begin when consumers have confidence the home they buy today will not be worth less tomorrow. We see that tipping point occurring in the first quarter before the highly anticipated easing of the Bank of Canada's key lending rate. So those comments were from the CEO of Royal LePage, Phil Soper. And of course, he's been very bullish on the real estate market. And of course, you know what I think. I'm probably the most bearish realtor in Canada. Actually, let me know. Who do you think is the most bearish realtor in Canada? I don't know if it is me, but I've got to be up there and I have my good reasons for it. Next, I want to move on to REMAX forecast. And this is the forecast for the 2024 year. The price outlook, there have just a modest increase of 0.5% increased activity so more uh, sales obviously and varied conditions so not very bullish but mildly uh, increasing sales and prices and the latest statement from sean cathcart korea's senior economist was the december bounce in home sales the start of the expected recovery in canadian housing markets probably not just yet said sean cathcart korea's senior economist it was more likely just some of the sellers and buyers that were holding on to unrealistic pricing expectations last fall finally coming together to get deals done before the end of the year. We're still forecasting a recovery in housing demand in 2024, but we'll have to wait a few more months to get a sense of what that ultimately looks like. So don't get confused with housing recovery. He's talking about a demand recovery. He's not specifically talking about prices. But of course, we have been at an all-time low for sales, or at least since 2008. So of course, you know, we can only go so low. I keep saying this, and we keep going lower. But realistically, we're probably at, our, at the bottom of the actual sales, number of sales. I expect sales to increase because they can't, again, they can't get much lower, especially with, you know, 1.2 million people or whatever came into Canada last year, but that doesn't necessarily translate into increased prices. Here's a good article from the CBC, where Ontario's housing market is headed in 2024. Forecasts predict sluggish sales unless mortgage rates drop sharply or sellers start cutting prices. Now, they interviewed three industry professionals or experts. You probably heard their names, but let's see what they have to say. Just a few quotes from each of them. There's a general consensus among those experts that sales volume will remain sluggish in the first part of 2024 until or unless mortgage rates come down significantly or sellers start accepting lower bids. The general trend we're probably going to see is one of continued stagnation, said Ron Butler, a broker with Butler Mortgage. And of course, Ron has his own podcast on YouTube, the Angry Mortgage Podcast or something like that. I don't find him that angry, but I'm sure he can be when he wants to. It's the combination of these high prices and high interest rates that is keeping a lot of buyers out of the market right now, Pasalas said. And that's John Pasalas, a broker in Toronto with Realosophy, I think is the name of his company is, does a lot of interviews and has a big social media presence also. 
TD economist Rishi Sandhi predicts sales volume to remain relatively low in the coming year, although better than what the numbers were in 2023. We think that the bottom has probably been reached, Sandhi says. Sales levels were just too darn low in Ontario in 2023. It's hard to go lower from there. So, of course, I agree. I've said that before myself. It is hard to go lower. And I think 2023 most likely was the bottom for sales. I wouldn't bet my life on it, but uh, it, it probably looks that way. Now, that article was uh, focusing on Ontario, but again, Ontario is the epicenter of the Canadian market right now. So it is relevant to the national picture as a whole. And just released today, I believe it was today, housing starts in Canada are down 7% year over year in 2023. So overall starts are down and single detached are actually down 25%. They make up 25% of that 7% down. So builders and developers are building less homes because there's less demand out there, especially at the prices they're currently at. And moving on to consumer confidence. Consumer confidence overall is at an all-time low. This chart goes back to 2003, and the percentage who think now is a good time for a major purchase is almost at its lowest point ever. December did tick up the tiniest little bit, but you can see it's, it's at an all-time low there, and uh, it doesn't look like it's getting better anytime soon. And then the overall index is also at an all-time low. It did tick up just a bit in December for some reason, but again, not enough for a major housing recovery at this point. Okay, so let's summarize this information. Let's put it in one chart to see where we are. I didn't cherry pick this data. I'm just trying to look for different industries. If you can think of another industry to weigh in on this, let me know. And uh, anyway, let's go through this chart here or this table. So the banks increasing loan loss provisions to cover bad debts. That's the big news from the banks this year. Not looking good for the housing market. Not a situation where housing will be, you know, rocketing to the moon and prices will be taking off with uh, news like that. The Bank of Canada, the Bank of Canada doesn't make forecasts on housing. They talk about it a lot in part of their economic uh, statements. But uh, in their statements, you know, in the last one in December, the economy is slowing. Shelter costs are still adding to inflation. So if they have any control over this, they're not going to let shelter costs keep adding to inflation or part of their mandate is to stop that. And how are they going to do that with higher interest rates, higher for longer? We will see this month what happens. The CPI today, 3.4%, and a major part of that is the housing or shelter costs, whether it's rent or the interest portion of the, the mortgage payments. It is a major concern. So they're not in the mood to see uh, house prices skyrocket. And I'm sure if they did, they're not going to start lowering rates when house prices are skyrocketing. Next, we have the big real estate brokerages, Royal LePage and Remax, which seem to put out their yearly forecasts. If there's other ones, let me know. I haven't heard, really heard of any. But Royal LePage, of course, sales up and prices up. And I think they're about 5.5% with prices. And Remax sales up and prices slightly up, just half a percent, as we just saw. The Canadian Real Estate Association forecasting a demand recovery, but they do have a wait-and-see approach. Not much on the price forecast, although there is a forecast out there that shows prices, I think, increasing. But uh, again, for 2024, they're more focused on demand. They didn't really talk about supply either, which was a thing I noticed. Here's the chart. You can see it shows the number of sales and the pricing, but it doesn't show listings. So there's no, no talk of supply. It's only demand in their equations. The industry experts we just saw from that CBC article, sluggish sales unless rates drop sharply or prices come down. The builders and developers, housing starts are down, right? So the builders didn't start as many homes last year. They're not going to finish as many this year in 2024. So there's a big indicator. The builders and developers, they know the demand's not there, especially at these prices, and, and they can't pencil those in. It's not happening in, uh, in 2024. And last of all, the consumers we looked at, consumer confidence at an all-time low. So you can see there, just from that table, the overall sentiment is leaning towards prices are not rebounding or going up anytime soon. We still have a long road to go, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm sure the sales will pick up, but people are going to be looking for deals. They're going to be offering lower prices. Everyone that I've talked to, uh, any buyers that I'm working with, they're all in the same boat. There's lots of listings out there, 
but the sellers need to be more realistic on the prices and they need to come down or the buyers need to negotiate more. Before I move on to the national stats, I am researching an agent for someone who reached out to me on Twitter. I need somebody in the Burnaby or Vancouver area, like-minded like me. This is what people want. Just honest, call it how it is. If the house is too priced too high, it's priced too high. Let them know, not just push them into the easiest sale. So if you know a good realtor in that Burnaby, Vancouver area, let me know, throw it in the comments, and I'll add them to my list when I'm doing my research. I have uh, agents that I know in many cities, but I don't know anyone in that area that I can be comfortable sending someone to. Okay, on to the national statistics. Canadian home sales see unexpected surge to close out 2023. Statistics released today by the Canadian Real Estate Association, CREA, show national home sales were up noticeably on a month-over-month -month basis in December 2023. Home sale activity recorded over Canadian MLS systems rose 8.7% between November and December 2023, putting it on par with some of last year's relatively stronger months recorded over the spring and summer. So, of course, big uptick in sales in December. But again, looking at the big picture, last year had one of the slowest or lowest sales numbers in uh, recorded history since 2008. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So, Yes, it was a big increase month over month, but the fall was very subdued, those sales, very low numbers of sales. So that's in context, it, uh, it's not as good as it seems, but again, can't really get much lower. So I'm sure we will see many upticks in the number of sales in the coming months. On an annual basis, home sales totaled 443,511 units in 2023, a decline of 11.1% from 2022. Actually, I'd like to add in there, it's also a decline of 32% from 2021. Now, 2021 was the biggest year for sales in, in history. So again, 32% down from 2021, but 11% down as reported here from 2022. It was technically the lowest annual level for national sales activity since 2008, although it was very close to the levels recorded in each of the five years following the 2008 financial crisis. And again, to put that into perspective, our population was millions less back in those years. While December did offer up a bit of a surprise in sales numbers to cap the year, the real estate test of the market's resilience will be in the spring, said Larry Serqua, chair of CREA. There are only a couple of months left until that gets underway. And I agree, this spring will be the test. If the spring, you know, gets off like a normal spring and prices increase a little bit, we're just headed in the same direction. If the spring stays flat though, that's when we're gonna see late year buying opportunities that I've previously forecasted. That's when things are gonna change and prices will most likely decline later in the year and into 2025. So this spring really is the big telltale of what's gonna happen in the market. He's right now, I don't see the opposite happening. I don't see the, mar the prices taking off and uh, sales jumping up to record levels. So a quick look at some charts of theirs, the sales activity by quarter, last quarter there, Q4 2023, nothing special as they reported. Looking at new listings in that most recent quarter, they look pretty healthy overall. So looking at the market balance here, the months of inventory did drop down a bit. It's below four now. And of course, the sales to new listings ratio did creep up because we had less new listings and more sales in December. One last chart I want to show from them is the aggregate composite MLS HPI, the year over year percentage change. So how much does it change year over year? And I just want to point out that it's been relatively flat. And it hasn't, there hasn't been any other really times uh, since they've recorded this that it's been flat. Uh, it's actually declining. So are we in a reversal or price is going to be declining again? It looks to me, yes, but again, it could break out either way, but it, that is unprecedented. There's no other time where it's been that flat. You could say 2013 was, but it had a clear trend. It was going down and it started going back up into 2014. This time, it's actually started going up and now it's going back down. So it'll be interesting. I think it's obviously going to start breaking to the downside at some point, but we will uh, obviously keep an eye on that along with the prices. And talking about the prices, here are the national price uh, movement for December. So prices did increase in Canada nationally 1.7% month over month or $11,000. 
4.6% year over year from last December or $29,000. And we are still down 19.5% from the peak or $159,000. And you can see there that head and shoulders pattern still looks very pronounced. Not a not big movement with that uh, recent change in December either way. We will see which way it breaks. You know which way I think it's going to break. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.